In this session, we're going to look at the reference mesh export option when we are working with a 3D Code AppLink connection plugin for Blender. So I have a subdivided version of Suzanne here that I'm going to use to simulate a high poly sculpt. And I'll click send after I have chosen reference mesh. When it's no longer highlighted blue, I know that it's finished. I can go to 3D Coat. And I should see the model here in the viewport. You'll notice that I'm in the paint workspace, and that's how reference meshes work. Reference mesh is actually an old legacy option. It's still usable. You can still do your retopology work on it just fine, but there are many more options if you choose to bring it in as a voxel object instead. But nonetheless, we're going to look at this option. I'll go to the Retopo workspace, and let's go ahead and use points and faces first. I'll go to the Symmetry panel, or you can hit the S key on your keyboard, and let's enable Symmetry. I like turning Virtual Mirror Mode off because when I'm creating geometry on one side, I want to make sure that it's actually copying it to the other side and not just showing me a preview. And that's what Virtual Mirror Mode does. Okay, so with points and faces chosen, I'm just going to click where I want to create vertices, and then I can make polygons from these. Now, when I'm ready to create polygons, I can just hover in the middle here, and you'll see a preview. I can right-click to create the polygon, and just continue doing that. After I've created the polygons, I can hover over a corner, right-click and drag to tweak on the fly. You also happen to have Control and Control Shift menu options, which allow you to access other tools on the fly. So this is a very versatile mode uh, when you're working with points and faces. One of the most common things you're going to want to do is split the faces. So I can hold down the Control key, and that will let me use the Split Rings tool on the fly by holding the Control key. I can switch to other tools using the Control shift menu. I'm going to switch to the Quads tool. I like using the Direct mode instead of the two-click method, which is the default currently. Direct allows you to just click your initial edge that you want to start from, and now all you have to do to lay down polygons is just make a single click. One reason why I'm seeing some distance here is because my additional extrusion is up a bit high. So let's make that zero. Okay, so I can hit escape to drop the tool. And go to split rings, come back, do that. One more here. Likewise, if you're using the quads tool, you can also hover over an edge, right click to tweak that edge, or a point if you hover over that. So right click and drag the point. So you have quite a bit of flexibility to tweak after you've created some geometry. Okay, now let's switch to the add and split tool. This one requires a little bit more manual effort, but it's when you need very precise placement of your vertices or polygons. I can use my bracket keys to reduce my brush size if I want. All right, so I'm going to click my first point. As you can see, it's let me draw the polygons very specifically. Now, let's say we are ready to bring this into Blender. We can go to the File menu and choose Update Retypo Mesh in Original App. So I'll click that. You can see it automatically updates it here in Blender. Just about as fast as I can click on that option. And the good thing is you can assign a hotkey to this entry. That way, as you make changes, you can just hit your hotkey and boom, it's going to update in Blender. Okay, so let's go over here in Blender. And I'll hit the tab key. 
Let's hide the Suzanne model. And there we go. That's a quick look at using the reference mesh option as well as working with the Retapo tools in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.